Hey guys, Level Cap here. Today we're going to talk about Battlefield 1, starting off with the fact that I've actually played the game before, hands-on, playing the game modes, but I can't really talk about that. At the uh, reveal event, there was sort of an off-to-the-side offline reveal where uh, a lot of press stuff was going on and they showed more gameplay and more behind-the-scenes stuff just for the press. And during this event, they revealed that there was Game Changers playing it and there's like a photo of me there. So people were like, hey, you got to play Battlefield. And I was like, oh yeah, I didn't know EA was going to tell the world about this. So I'm stuck in a weird situation where I can say that I've played the game. I can't tell you what it was like when I played it or what the cool things that I saw when I was playing it. Obviously, I know more about the game that's been revealed in the trailer just from having played it. That being said, there's still plenty I haven't seen or experienced. And the very nature of these events was to give basic feedback on an extremely early version of the game. So what I played wasn't even a feature complete version of the game yet. It was mostly to play through and just see what we thought on a very basic level, uh, what things we liked, what things we didn't like, and then they take our feedback and they make adjustments based on what they think or of our experiences or how we reacted to it. So basically my opinion of whatever I played isn't really substantial because what I played is going to be very different by the time it launches. All right, now that we got that out of the way, what about this Battlefield reveal? What the heck do you guys think about it? it according to EA, it's the biggest video game reveal in the industry's history. I'm not sure what that means, if it's specifically EA's industry or the video game industry, but uh, I, it had a ton of viewers on Twitch at once. I think at one point it was like over 600,000 concurrent viewers and there was a huge amount uh, watching simultaneously. Massive, massive traffic on the trailer. It's barely over a day old and already over 13 million views. It's one of those trailers that you want to keep watching too. I've watched it like 10, 20 times now, not to mention track through it frame by frame looking for details, but it's really well edited and fun to listen to with that awesome song from the White Stripes. And as amazing and groundbreaking as that trailer must have been for everybody to see, based on what I know about the game I think they even held back a bit with what they're showing you which is saying something I mean they really held some cool stuff back uh, which is going to make some of the follow-up trailers even cooler if they reveal that kind of information uh, closer to launch day. Now I should mention that if you haven't seen my trailer breakdown and press information video that I launched yesterday, check it out. Uh, it's growing crazy fast right now but I put every bit of information that I was able to tell you guys about in that video. It's like 17 minutes long and there is a ton of info. There's been an overwhelmingly positive response, not just to my videos, but to the trailer itself and the direction of Battlefield, which I think is really exciting, especially considering how the community uh, polled with uh, what they wanted for the next Battlefield game. World War One was definitely not at the top of the list, but now that we see EA's vision, DICE's vision for this next Battlefield game set in World War One, everybody's like, oh, no, it's cool. I'm good with that. That looks awesome. Let's play that. Give me the game now. Some of the stereotypes of trench warfare have kind of been torn down a bit here. We did see some of the trenches. Obviously, there's going to be trench warfare in the game, but I don't think it's going to be a focus or even a majority of the gameplay. Uh, aside from the massive scope of vehicle combat, we saw a lot of desert combat. We saw forest combat. We saw... Um, battleships basically well dreadnoughts uh, so there's going to be naval stuff going on mountainous regions the italian alps i mean visually the game looks more attractive than any previous battlefield game and that's not what i think anybody would have expected from a world war one theme in addition to that even though the trailer didn't show a whole bunch of first person footage i did get to see a lot more of that footage during the press event the offline press event um, and it showed a bigger variety of weapons there were submachine guns there were um, machine guns that appeared to be handheld there was certainly bolt action rifles and uh, what looked to be like semi-automatic rifles and stuff like that but there was also shotguns you know there was like Remington shotguns and stuff people blowing down doors with shotguns so uh, the the stigma that World War one is simply just bolt action rifles or just these very long rifles and that that's it pretty much and then mounted machine guns they've completely gotten away from that 
so what I saw was a huge variety of weaponry being used by all sorts of soldiers. Yeah, if you want to take it traditional and go classic with these sort of bolt action rifles, you can do that. Fix a bayonet on there, you got your bayonet charge and all that stuff. You can make it look old school and authentic, but it seems like they're bringing in the, the big variety of weaponry that actually was available throughout the entire course of the war, and you can kind of just pick from any of that stuff, like you can in most of the other Battlefield games. It really follows the same format. Like, Battlefield 4 is not necessarily realistic in the sense that you can pick any sort of Russian or Chinese or American assault rifle and just jump in a battle on any faction. That's not really realistic, but it's fun because you get to pick any weapon from modern era and in this you'll be able to pick any weapon from the world war one era it appears now something that was emphasized during the press stream and that i'm particularly excited about is going back to sort of the basics of analog controls and what they what they meant by this was like no high-tech lock-on weaponry you're not going to be doing any sort of uh shooting that doesn't require skill everything's going to be point and shoot recoil control and that sounds awesome to me. It's what I kind of miss a lot from like Battlefield 1942. If you saw an airplane in the sky, you had to shoot it down. You couldn't just lock on with a rocket launcher, fire and forget. That's not going to be in this game. And I love that. Going back to the basics, getting rid of the complicated weaponry that sort of removes the skill from getting the kill. They also mentioned a pretty big focus on close quarter combat, and I don't know if that means they're trying to change the average engagement distance. Obviously, trench warfare is going to be close quarters. Uh, they talked about the, the variety of melee weapons sort of applying to that, so depending on your fighting style or how much CQB combat you wanted to do, you might pick something that's a little bit more geared towards actually needing to fight and kill a lot of people with melee weapons, which is totally crazy. Um, the shotguns would definitely be be good for that smgs i imagine would be good for that even handheld machine guns running around uh, for clearing trenches and stuff i'm sure there'll be bolt action rifles and snipers as we have seen from the trailer already but uh, it'll be interesting to see if the the engagement distance really does change up as we've seen from the trailer there's been some very big wide open map so saying that there's going to be a lot of close quarter engagement will be interesting maybe there's going to be a lot of like zigzagging through trenches to get closer to people or you can climb out of the trench and try and make a break for it on open ground another aspect that seems like it's going to be significantly different from previous battlefield games is the armored versus infantry combat they mentioned getting an entire squad into a tank. Now, based on how the World War I tanks worked, you actually needed a full crew to operate them at maximum efficiency, steering them, driving them, navigating, shooting. That was all very difficult. It was all like a very analog back then. So it was not automated and high tech. So it'll be interesting to see if you need a full squad to make the tank function properly. Uh, obviously, there's a lot of side turrets on the tanks. The Mark IV has side turrets. Will the driver control the side turrets or will you have to have a secondary gunner? That's something that like uh, Planet Side 1 had where there was like the driver of the tank and then the gunner. So you had to have good, good teamwork and coordination like that. Will that be an aspect of the new Battlefield game? It could be. That could be pretty darn cool. Also, there was no handheld rocket launchers in World War One. That really only came about in World War Two. So think about that for a second. That's the main tool for taking out armor in current battlefield games. Sounds like you're going to have to get a bit closer to the armor. In fact, uh, in some of the offline trailer footage, it showed a player throwing dynamite onto a tank and then detonating. And as I discovered in my trailer breakdown video, so soldiers will be able to carry anti tank grenades so it seems like these kind of grenades and dynamite are going to be maybe the primary weapon that infantry have available to them so when the devs say they're focusing a lot on some close quarter combat it might not just be infantry versus infantry it might also be infantry versus armor something that i'm quite excited for is the realism aspect of the aerial vehicles now previous battlefield games they've had to tone down what jets could do because they're flying so flippin' fast in real life that they'd fly over an actual battlefield map in like half a second. 
Not to mention, most jets aren't going to be doing strafing runs. Aside from like the A-10 Warthog, most of them are just going to be flying at crazy high altitudes and dropping laser guided bombs in a real war. But uh, in World War I, you got machine guns mounted on the front of the plane, you got people throwing bombs out of the cockpit onto uh, troops in the trenches below, you got lots of low flying aircraft. And that is something that I am excited for because uh, they're flying slow enough to have them make a lot more sense on the battlefield scale maps. I cannot wait to see what aerial combat is like. I hope that uh, the developers also incorporate some turn and burn and boom and zoom mechanics to make the aerial combat a little bit more realistic and interesting. Not necessarily harder, but just give it a little bit more depth as opposed to the watching your airspeed and just maximizing your turn radius approach of previous battlefield games. Anyway, there's a ton more to discuss about Battlefield 1. Um, it appears that there's going to be something going on at EA Play in regards to Battlefield 1 and also mentions of an open beta for the game. So that's really cool. I mean, it makes sense they, they've done beta for the previous ones, but it means it's probably going to be in the near future since we've got an October release date and that uh, E3 is in June, I would imagine the beta is going to be sometime uh, between June and October. So that's something that we definitely all have to look forward to. I'd love to hear in the comments just in general, what's what do you guys think? Are you excited? Are you concerned? What would you like to see? What do you definitely not want to see? Uh, please let me know. I'm very interested. And as always, guys, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. This is Level Cap signing off.